Here is a 2024 Hyundai Tucson hybrid inline all-wheel drive in titanium gray over black and black. This is all new for a hybrid variant to get the inline. What I mean by that is last year when we had the inline, it was just aesthetics. We're gaining 39 horsepower and 80 pound-feet of torque. Is that going to be enough to be the best in its class? I'm Anthony from Hawkeye Rides. I'm going to go over some pros and cons. The problem that I have with the Tucson and comparable rivals starting in the front all trims receive LED headlights and daytime runnings. You get premium when you're on this trim. Projected LED headlights when you go into the limited. Inline is going to have a unique grille, the lower bumper. But what's special about this inline is housed underneath this hood. A smart stream 1.6 liter four cylinder turbocharged hybrid engine with a combined of 226 horsepower and 258 pound feet of torque paired to a six speed automatic transmission, achieving 37 MPGs for the city, 36 MPGs for the highway. So you're not only getting great fuel economy. But now this is going to be faster than last year's inline. 19 inch alloy wheels, inline badging on the side, the side view mirrors, get the gloss black. Otherwise it's going to be the same color as the body. So a little bit more unique with the gloss black around all the window trims, the roof rails, and the lower rocker with the McPherson strut front suspension that has coil springs. The rear is an independent multi-link. So when we're thinking about the rival perspective, this is now getting the MPGs that it needed, the speed, plus you have the suspension to give more of a dynamic drive for the inline. And when we're talking about competition, Honda, Toyota, which will have the most ground clearance in its segment, and Mazda, they don't even offer a hybrid trim. This is going to be the least grown up. So it's still a bit fun and playful. The rear gets LED tail lights. The spoiler is inline spec as well as the lower bumper that boasts the diffuser and the dual exhaust tip. So when we're going hybrid, we're still getting that athletic approach, whereas you're not going to receive that when you go into Honda. All trims on the hybrid will receive a power trunk lid going into 38.7 cubic feet. We get a 12 volt charger, privacy cover. Underneath the floor, we get some storage. The nice thing about the Tucson is you can lower this and you're gonna receive another three to four inches from top to bottom. And you can split fold the rear bench in the back, unlike pretty much all the rivals. And that will increase cargo to 74.8 cubic feet. Even though it's a hybrid, it's the inline. Let's go inside, start it up so you can hear that exhaust sound. Ten-way power seat adjustment is standard. The Limited gets power seat adjustment for the front seats. Heated front seats is also standard. Ventilated only on the Limited trim. Inline badging because these are the sport cloth. The base trim will just have a cloth. The SEL Convenience will have the H-Track cloth. Headroom and leg room. The inline gets the sport pedals. We do not receive a pass through, but we have some sleeves on both sides. The foot wells are wide and deep. The dashboard integrates into all of the door panels with that piano black, and you get the soft materials in between. The air vents are gonna be a little bit more seamless. A lot of gloss black elements, two digital readers, a 10.25 center infotainment with Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, Sirius XM, AM, FM, streaming Bluetooth audio, Blue Link. And when you click here, you have a quick wedge on the side, put it into reverse, and we have a reverse camera with trajectory that expands going underneath Two USBs, 12 volt, QI wireless charging pad, an area for some more storage. Gloss black elements are going to surround with the in badging and the key fob for the Tucson. It's gonna be a little bit more sporty. Opens up into a deep storage pocket. Leather wrap steering wheel, perforated on the side, in badging, and we get the cross stitch multi-function with adaptive cruise control lane keep assist with the paddle shifts. The gauge cluster can go through an array of information for the driver. 
and you have different modes. So we have Eco, Sport, Smart, Snow. No auto dimming rear view mirror, but a large panel moonroof and the door is going to have soft materials that's found in the design and a little bit where you rest your arms, one touch up and down for the front windows with a large storage pocket that could fit some beverages in the front. And the Bose upgraded sound system starts on the inline. For the back seat headroom, I have it adjusted all the way back. To adjust it forward more, you're gonna sit more like a 90 degree angle, but I still have headroom over six foot tall. Leg space is not bad in the position that I would be sitting in the front. Storage net, air vents, USB ports, cup holders with armrest, and the door has the same segment that's found in the front, except you only get a bottle holder in the door pocket. Sliding into the center, the floor isn't completely flat. The rails are pushed up enough. You will be sharing butt and shoulder space, feet space, not so much. And headroom becomes a little bit more tight because you sit up higher in the center. 226 horsepower, 258 pound-feet of torque over 30 horsepower more than the last inline because of this hybrid setup. 80 pound-feet of torque more. Now, it's not gonna be like a Toyota RAV4 Prime that has over 300 horsepower, but it should still be a lot of motivation. Plus, the MPGs is pretty decent for this. Look at this thing go. Now, because it is a four-cylinder turbo, the engine note will filter in, but because it's a hybrid, it will be cutting on and off also, so it makes it a little bit more quiet. The sound deadening is pretty good. Towing is the best in class at 2,000 pounds. In interior space, you have quite a bit of it. I do wish that they added a full pass-through instead of these sleeves because it would help with some storage space. And in the back seat, you kind of lose a little bit because there's only a bottle holder on both sides, which when you go into Honda, it's not gonna be the case. And let's see how she goes. It's pretty quick. The steering has a little bit more weight to it, so I kind of like that because when you're getting into the inline, you want it to feel a little bit more sporty, and that's what you're getting. Even with the suspension, the best suspension goes to the Honda because of the double wishbone layout for the rear, but when you're thinking about overall package because you're wanting to get some speed and decent MPGs, this ticks the box. It's gonna take me to some pros and cons. We're gonna start off with the pros is now we actually get a proper inline in the sense of performance, whereas last year we didn't receive that at all. It was just an aesthetic kit in which when you go down the trim to the blue or the SEL convenient, you can tell the difference from the outside aesthetics, even going into a limited. Turn radius is about two lanes. Just more or less everyday drive, so you'll be hitting about two and a half to three RPMs. To get it a little bit motivated, you do sit up a little bit higher. I'm not a huge fan of all the gloss black elements, but I like how it's simplified and it just kind of goes into the dash and the whole vehicle actually configures together, which is a big deal for me because when I'm looking at a car for long term, I want the aesthetics to fit the vehicle. I think they did a good job with that. That's going to take me to some cons and it has to start off with it being one of the worst in class for MPGs compared to Toyota and Honda. The back seat, you lose some storage capacity. Cargo capacity isn't bad. You get over 74 cubic feet with the back seats folded down and you can fold down the back seats in the back so you don't have to go to the back door like some of the rivals. going to be a little bit more bumpy. The seats are going to be a little bit more sporty than the SLE convenience and the blue. And the big problem that I have with the Tucson inline, just like last year, they really have just given a trim because this engine is in all of the hybrid trims, which I kind of wish that they would 
give just a little bit more and I am digging that we get more power. It's just not derived because of the inline. It's derived because it's a hybrid. So they're still not necessarily taking inline in perspective to making it a performance variant. And I understand this is a Tucson. So when you're thinking an SUV, you're not thinking something that you're going to take on the track. It just would be nice if they threw in an extra 20 to 30 horsepower and maybe made it a hundred pound feet of torque more than the last. So that way, whenever you're going into the inline, it's not just because you're getting aesthetics on the exterior and upgrades in the interior. It's because you're actually getting a performance variant. The seats are comfortable, drive smooth, hybrids. I mean, I would go in this level instead of going to a full electric vehicle because that way at least you still have the combustion engine even plug-in hybrid maybe offer that for the inline and i think that would be the sweet spot for this vehicle because it would give it that extra kick kind of like the toyota rav4 prime but let me know your thoughts in the comments and if you're new to the channel consider subscribing check out the next video merchandise website and instagram leave a comment and a like and i'd like to thank brandon hyundai for giving us this 2024 hyundai tucson inline for our car review